the emerging woman will be strong-minded, strong-hearted, strong-souled, and strong-bodied. Strength and beauty must go together. And that is what you get here at the Betty Adero Foundation, a place you'll call the home of empowerment and inspiration. My name is Petronila Nguono, the founder of Enkare Oltao Volunteers Foundation, a foundation that empowers people in the community through volunteerism and in particular young people, influencing them to change their society through acts of volunteerism. I met Betty in 2019. I was volunteering at an event near KICC. It was Good Deeds Day. And a friend of mine called me and told me, Petra, I have invited someone for that event. I'm not sure if she's going to come, but if she comes, I really want you to take care of her. So this is her number. When she arrives, she's going to call you. I didn't know it was Betty. I was following what she was doing during Miss President, and I really wanted an opportunity to, to meet her. So the contact just read Betty. So when she arrived, she called me, and I was supposed to show her where she's supposed to sit. It was a, a very big event. And she called me. She told me I, I was told to contact you when I get here. And yeah, where are you? So when I saw it was Betty, I was shocked. I was like, oh my God, I really wanted to meet Betty for the longest time. I admire her work with Betty Adera Foundation. So for me, it was an honor. So that was the first time we interacted. And I told myself, you know what? Grasp this opportunity because you're never going to get it again. So. I interacted with her during the event, and after that, I asked her, can I meet you? Like, can we get to have a sit down and maybe have coffee? Because there's so much I would really just want to learn from you. And that was the beginning of an amazing relationship up to date. She has been a pillar in my life, and I love her, and she's such a support system. You know, I have worked with her and she has worked with me since 2019 to date. My name is Betty Adera. Uh, I am a loving mother of two young men. I am an enthusiast of women and youth issues. I'm a woman myself and I'm a mother of young of the youth today, mentoring thousands uh, out there. I'm Miss President, Nairobi County. I am president and founder of Betty Adera Foundation. And by training, I am a public health specialist uh, with a specialization on adolescent sexual reproductive health and rights and policy and financing in the health sector. Originally, I come from Sayre County. So, in my tribe, we say I am a Nyar Game, a daughter from Game, Game area in Sayre County. But my parents uh, migrated to Migori County. So I grew up in Migori County. My family has been a large one. Uh, both my parents arrested. But of our siblings, we are eight of us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we are so closely tied together and, you know, closely following uh, each other. I recall one time when we were almost four of us in high school at the same time. And my parents, uh, being teachers, I think they gave us the best gift that any parent can give, you know, their children. And not just education, but also grounding in, in principles of life that I have applied to, to, to this day and that I will continue to apply until my last breath uh, on earth. So I attended Migori Primary and then uh, I was the best in the district at that time and I was invited to come to Nairobi to pursue my secondary education in Kenya High School. That was a transition. <laughs> You know, like from Wothogik village. My village is called Wothogik, and it actually means the end of the road. Misha was safari. So if you grow up in a village with a funny name, and you make it, you know, to a school such as the Kenya High School 
here in Kenya in my time, that was not a joke. That was not a, a, a small you know, achievement. And I want to believe that uh, apart from the academics, uh, the, the secondary set up in Kenya high school and the values that they instill to girls there, you know, of being bold, of going for it. If you want it, you go for it. Actually, that's what we kept on hearing every single day uh, in, in that school. And again, that added to, to who I have been today. So after that, I pursued my bachelor's degree uh, in sociology here at the University of Nairobi, and then moved to pursue a master's degree um, in, in, in public health, and pursued another master's degree <laughs> in management, uh, and I'm currently pursuing my doctorate uh, in global public health. Um, again, deepening my skills and knowledge set uh, on adolescent uh, health. But apart from that, I have also done about 10 postgraduate diplomas spanning from international law uh, to diplomacy and sustainable development. And I'm pursuing another one concurrently right now on climate action. You know, if you're a health expert, we believe that everything, you know, is a health, is a health issue. And at my level, I need to speak intelligently about you know health health, health issues. Um, I currently work for an organization called Global Communities. That's an international organization, and there, I serve as the senior technical advisor for HIV/AIDS and health, and I'm also the focal person for infectious uh, diseases. All that wrapped in in me, but what's most important um, is that. Out of my own upbringing, uh, my parents taught all of us, not just me, all of us, the value of sharing and the value of giving. You might think your case is the worst case scenario, but when you listen to somebody else, you want to tell yourself that, hey, hey Mimi, I am not that, 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 that bad, you know. And there's always somebody out there who is praying to God to make them be like you. While you think your case is the worst case scenario, someone wants to be like you, you know. So, uh, growing up in a large family and every school holiday, all our cousins used to come, sometimes we go, and it was such a beautiful, a beautiful thing. And we all kind of looked alike until at some point people couldn't tell, you know, who's who. They were all, oh, those are the children of Mualimu Adera, you know, and, 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 and that was fine. So that has gotten me to where I am today plus I mean other experiences that I have had you know in my own life I have had seasons where I've lacked I've had seasons where with my two boys I didn't know when the next meal is going to come from or where the next school fees is going to come from so when people come to me with those issues you know I, 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 I feel it I identify with it I, I say that whoa I, I was there even worse uh, but God brought me out. God brought me through. And at that time, God also brought for me helpers. Somehow God has his, his, his own ways. So maybe I'm called upon now to also be a helper, you know, to others. And it's because of that that then I founded Betty Adera Foundation, mainly to respond to issues around violence against women and girls. But that's not all we do. We have metamorphosized into a youth program, you know, um, identifying talent and, and linking young people to, to opportunity, uh, economic empowerment of women, of women and girls, peace building, you know, not just here, but, you know, globally, um, aspects around climate, climate action as well is a space that, uh, that, that, that we actually occupy. Hence the global <laughs> and regional and in-country uh, recognition you know that I have achieved uh, over the years thanks to God and also then now oc occupying the space now at my age of now mentoring young people especially both, both men and women but mainly you know young women who look up to me you know for direction who look up to me to want to tap into my spaces you know nationally and also internationally 
But most importantly, those who come and just ask me, I want to find purpose in my life. Where do I begin? All right. I am a leader in academia, in STEM, in business as a young woman. So what, you know, what can I do to, to expand, you know, my influence? Hence, I also function as the patron for Young Women uh, uh, Forum in Africa, not just Kenya, in Africa. And in there, we talk mainly about issues to do with um, uh, leadership uh, skills of, of, of young women. Because I feel if I don't do that now, who will be Betty tomorrow? Because my time is coming. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm facing myself out. You know, but who's there? If I face my God one day, and he asked me, so what did you do with the life I gave you? I want to look back and say, hey, look at them. Look at them. At least I, I impacted them in one way or the other. A hero's journey entails a lot that ordinary people and other heroes can learn from. And there's always a starting point. You know, integrity is a term that people loosely, loosely use, you know. But if you don't stick to your own promise, that's an integrity issue. Integrity is not only some money grew legs in your in your hands <laughs> or under your care. No, it's much it's it's much broader than that. How authentic are you? How can you be believed that if you say something, you actually mean it? If you say you're gonna do something by time X, you actually do it by time X. I can tell you for a fact that I'm still learning and uh, trying to get better at this value around uh, integrity. But so far, it is my integrity that has made my name to be mentioned in places that my legs have never stepped. It is the value and my outlook around integrity and my practice of it that has caused all these awards to come. From nowhere, I get an email. We were talking and your name came up. We were discussing what, 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 and your name came up. There's an opportunity to go and speak somewhere, and we looked around and looked around the room and looked and looked, and your name, you know, your name came up. I have traveled internationally a lot, and if I just speak about the last one, a few weeks ago, when I was invited to San Diego, California, to give a keynote address in a room full of like almost a thousand um, private sector donors to give the meaning of what it means to do work in a context such as ours. And the email came, random email from Dear Betty. We are thinking about this, we were talking, and we considered who would be best place to, you know, deliver that message authentically. And people I don't know, these are even wazungus, you see my point? And the email just came. So integrity is something I keep telling young people every single day. Uh, you can be quick to point it out on someone, oh, that president, oh, that leader, oh, that politician. What about you? What are you doing yourself, you know, to be authentic to people? In whatever space you are, how can people believe you? How can people leave all other youth but come to you? This, there has to be something, you know, about you. So integrity is... Um, one that, uh, that guides me every single day. And I think it compasses everything else. You know, once you live by that principle, then it kind of makes everything else, you know, like, like fall, in, fall in place. The other one uh, that I'll mention uh, is the principle of giving. It is what, to be honest, gives me a good night's sleep. Actually. <laughs> And it's not about giving a thousand people. No, no, no. And it's not about giving money or giving food. Or it's giving of your time. Time is the most precious gift as far as, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So if you can give your time to someone, even if it's five minutes a day, even if it's one hour, even if it's what, to me, that really keeps me going. So giving of your time, just checking up on people. So I make it a principle of mine. Every day I have to call three people who I have not spoken to in the last three months. You can imagine how many people I know. <laughs> At least three. That's what I can deal with. I mean, in terms of time of the day. And let me tell you, you call even one person. Just that you called them. Oh, maybe I just in an agenda. 
I was just calling to find out how you're doing, how your family is doing, even me, I'm doing fine, bye. You know, that kind of wakes people up. So the value of giving, all right? For me, it's giving of your time. And of course, in that space, you'll figure out someone has not eaten, someone is stuck with school fees, someone is stuck with a medical bill, someone is stuck with something, you know, that needs money. To whatever extent, you know, I can help, I do. If I can't help, I always try to refer to places where, you know, help can be found. But that I give of my time to people outside of my two sons or outside of my family, let me call it, that gives me a good night's sleep.